Hi there. This is, uh, as you can see from the um, thumbnail title card, without my face, this is another interlude like the maps. Um, I wanted to, at least in the thumbnail, to make sure that all 16 of the photos, which luckily on my first try fit very well into the um, screen, um, I guess I will actually lost my first almost eight minute attempt to do this because I'm doing it in photo booth but uh, at least a brief glimpse yeah of all the photos I don't know if that's gonna screw up the um, green screen backdrop but um, I suppose if if my body vanishes it'll make it even easier to see the photos all right so one at a time from the upper left on the screen you know scrolling right as if you would read I'm going to read the um, um, descriptions of each photo number one during the autumn caribou migration the people of the deer speared the animals at crossing places on many inland lakes such as the one in central Kiwatan Pamelo the shaman making a bow from sections of caribou antler at his summer camp in the Little Lakes country. A social evening at Windy River Cabin with a song, feast, or drum dance in progress. Left to right are Mickey Ohoto, drumming, Alec Tuk, Hiqua, and Utek. A portrait of Mickey, taken in the summer of 1947. Utek standing among the frost-driven rock of Inno country, country of the spirits. Utnuyuk, one of Pomela's wives, cleans a caribou skin at the author's travel camp in the Barrens. Ohoto making the string figure called Tuktoriak, spirit of the deer. Windy Cabin on the Windy River at New Elton Lake with, left to right, Yaha, Alektuk, and Mickey. The photo was taken just after they had been issued with cast-off army trousers. A portrait of Pamela, most powerful shaman of the Helmwit, taken in 1948. An oasis of scrub spruce in the Kiwatin tundra, not far from the Little Lakes. The skein of lines in the foreground is made up of caribou trails. A fine buck caribou, killed in late autumn and cached for winter use. The upturned head resting on its own antlers will make it visible after the snows have fallen. Yaha, cleaning his knife after skinning and quartering a caribou on the banks of the Cousin River. A young Padle woman carrying her child in the Amout, standing outside a travel snow house. She is in full winter dress. A winter camp of the people of the deer, the conical summer toupee, T-O-P-A-Y, not spelled like the hair piece, is still in use because not enough snow has yet gathered for the making of snow houses. A starving woman of the Padelier Mute during the famine of 1948-1949. She wears the facial tattoos which were customary until about 1940. And finally, a row of Inukok, semblances of men, on a ridge in the barren lands. The Inuit hunter standing among them gives an idea of their size. Yeah, in uh, looking, thinking about those photos, the ones I always like the, one, the most are the ones that give a sense of up close of people's faces and faces are always fascinating faces with long experience weathered lines and you can almost sense, uh, sense the memories and uh, hardships they've gone through the old woman's face the, the young mother's face and the little baby and uh, Mickey and um, forget some of the other names, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> wonderful faces suggestive of a truly different culture.